welcome back. He's going to come across crocodiles, raging torrents and swamps the size of England. None of these, though, will stop Leveson Wood from conquering, we hope, the world's longest river. Former paratrooper is determined to complete what no explorer has ever managed before. He's about to walk the entire length of the River Nile, 4,000 miles of it, and joins us now. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Well, good can morning. I say first, you have a great name for an explorer. <laughs> Leveson <laughs> Wood. Yes, it kind of runs in the family. It's my dad's name and his dad's name as well. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Oh, you're a third generation of... Fifth generation, actually. Of Levisons. That's right. Yeah. And you're going to do this epic adventure. It's a long way. It is a long way. 4,200 and something miles. Nobody really knows. Um, all on foot, that's the plan. There's no towpath? There's no towpath, no. It's not like the Thames or the Trent. No. So what do you walk along then? Um, I mean, basically, it's um, just walking along the banks of the river as, as close to the river as possible, really. And, you know, if I can do that all the way, then it'll be uh, recognised by the Guinness Book of Records. Right. And what are so the on. main hazard, not obstacles to stop you, clearly, just walking simply along the river bank for 4,000 miles? Well, there's quite a few. There's everything from minefields in places like South Sudan. Um, you know, there's lots of, um, lots of sort of environmental problems and threats in terms of, you know, this, like you said, the Sud Swamp in South Sudan. Again, that's it's the world's biggest swamp, about the size of England. The Sahara Desert in uh, Sudan and Egypt. So lots of, lots of things I can do, go How are you going to walk through the swamp? Uh, basically walk around as close to the uh, river as possible. I mean, it's impossible to walk through the actual swamp itself, uh, but just staying as close to the river as possible. How long do you imagine it will take? Uh, anywhere between nine and 18 months. It's very difficult to sort of pin down exactly how long it it's going to take. It could take nine months, it could take twice <laughs> that long. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah so I mean, you say to your family, well, I'll be back in... Um a year and a half, maybe. I've given them a window of, uh, of uh, chance. But you have done your homework. Here's a look at you taking, looking at the route you're going to take yep. through Africa. So the source of the Nile is in Rwanda in the Nyungwe Forest. Um, it's about 450 miles all the way from the source into Lake Victoria, a huge crocodile-infested lake. From there, the White Nile proper then starts flowing north. You've got the Sud Swamp, and it's a swamp that, in the rainy season, um, expands to the size of England. Crossing over the infamously dodgy border into Sudan, this is really when the Sahara Desert starts. I'm going to arrive here hopefully in about June, which means it's the hottest time of the year. Egypt's virtually on the brink of civil war at the moment. You are going through some politically sensitive and potentially dangerous places. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, I mean, Egypt, you only have to sort of look at the news to see what's happening there. Mm. But um, hopefully by the time I get there in 12 months, it should be, uh, well, we'll see. You have been to some hostile say. environments before, of course. Uh, yes, yes. I was in the parachute regiment, so I spent a bit of time out in Afghanistan and uh, lots of places around Africa as well. So I've, um, been Do you before. take security with you? Not really. I mean, it's really important on a trip like this to, you know, get the best local guides possible. So um, finding people that really know the terrain, can speak the languages, you know, know the tribal chiefs and places like that. Mm. Uh, and will you be on your own? I mean, how, do you, how do you manage the supplies and that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, luckily parts of the Nile are quite well inhabited, you know, lots of villages along the way, so I can effectively move from village to village, buying supplies along the way. Um, but yeah, like I say, really important to get guides on board. Who, is it just you in the backpack? Yeah, it? basically me in the backpack with, with a guide that I can find on the way. Mm. It's not just, um, you know, civil wars and political unrest you need to worry about. There are creatures. Right. along the Nile. Um, which of those holds the greatest terror for you? Um, well, crocodiles are pretty scary. Yeah. Um, however, I think, you know, the, the old adage in Africa is that the most dangerous place is between a hippo and the water, and that's kind of where I'm going to be for a long way. And b because hippos are huge weighty creatures that can get cross with you? Yes, they can, you know, and they like being in the water. And if, you're, if they're on the land and you're walking on the banks and they see you, then they're quite likely to charge. So it's knowing where they are and trying to understand what they do. What do you do if you need medical attention along the way? Um, I mean, basically, I'm going to carry a small med, med pack that, that mm. I can sort of sort myself out with in terms of first aid. But if, I, if it's really serious, then, you know, I've luckily got a, a good backup team that I can sort of call in, hopefully get rescued. And it's all for charity? Yeah, it's for charity, yeah. Work with four great charities, Tusk, Tr uh, Tusk Trust uh, and Space for Giants, looking at conservation for elephants, uh, the Amica Trust and uh, the Armed Forces um, Army Benevolent Fund. Leveson, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank Starting you very much. On the 1st of December, you can follow his progress online at walkthenile.com. Thanks very much for your company this morning. Charlie and Louise back tomorrow at 6 o'clock. They'll be joined by Wet, Wet, Wet. Have a good day, whatever you're doing. Bye-bye.